nella prima partita col Bahrain uh, we faced some difficulties throughout the game especially uh, the speed uh, of uh, the Indian players uh, uh, they showed very good performance and they will have a say at the next championship because they are very good team uh, they are fast uh, they use counter attack uh, we used uh, we faced some uh, attacks from them but then thankfully uh, uh, I made uh, some changes uh, at the second uh, half so at the second half uh, the performance uh, was uh, very much different uh, we managed uh, to possess uh, the ball many times and the uh, UAE team managed to get close to the goal uh, and uh, we were more focused especially at the defense uh, and we were very much compact uh, the attack uh, was uh, very efficient so we managed to score the second goal at the end of the game and I congratulate the players uh, for their wonderful efforts. That was Alberto Zaccheroni, the head coach of the United Arab Emirates, speaking after the UAE's 2-0 win over India the other day. Uh, a massive game and a massive amount of praise coming from a man who has won the Scudetto with AC Milan, the Asian Cup with Japan, as well as the East Asian Championships. So a highly qualified, highly accomplished coach there, speaking very highly about the new Indian team. And we're talking about the EFC Asian Cup, of course, building up to India's final group game against Bahrain. In studio, we have uh, Mr. Ishfaq Ahmed, who's come down from the Hasi Vadiya of Kashmir. <laughs> and from the bylanes of Bandra, we have Mr. Arjun Pandit, looking sharp as ever. No makeup. <laughs> no makeup. So, we're in a unique situation. It's a massive tournament, an Asian championship, and India are on the verge of qualifying for the knockout stages. Yes, let's hope they qualify first. Yeah. Right. So we'll start with uh, the scenario, how it stands, how the groups are shape shaping up. Uh, Pandit, run us through some of those scenarios to begin with and then we'll get into the meat of, of, of our show today. Yeah, bhai. So, uh, firstly, Ishwak, if you don't have a relationship, if you don't have a relationship, then shame, shame. I have a relationship. I'm taking Something works. But uh, as far as the group is concerned, Group A now, United Arab Emirates right on top with four points plus two goal difference. India in second position, three points plus one goal difference. And why I'm saying goal difference is because that could play a key factor in whether our team progresses or not. Thailand, third position, three points but minus two goal difference. While Bahrain, last in the group, one point and a minus one goal difference. So, scenario na thoda. It's not tricky, if I may say, because A, both teams are going to be played, both games are going to be played at the same time, right? So, if UAE, when they're taking on Thailand, for an India perspective, you would want the UAE to beat Thailand. If UAE has Thailand, then India can still go through as the third place team, even if they lose to Bahrain, right? If Thailand manages to hold the UAE to a draw, which means Thailand then moves to four points, UAE moves to five points, UAE automatically goes through and then Thailand then is in contention for that third spot or second spot. Because if Bahrain then manages to beat India, then India finishes with three points, while Bahrain will move on to four points. So from an India perspective, you would have to say that irrespective of what is happening in the other game, UAE versus Thailand, eight point to Lena hi padega if we are to stand a chance of qualifying as the third place teams. Else, goal difference pe bahut dhyan dena padega. So in a... Uh, you know, like actually you are saying that we should support two teams that day. Maybe UAE and our national team, both the teams. So, <laughs> UAE can, UAE can uh, give us a huge favor by beating uh, Thailand. Thailand. And, uh, you know, like uh, that can be a very crucial thing, you know, at the end. Even if we are not beating, uh, we even if we get draw one point from the Bahrain match, can automatically get us through. But Ishwak, I didn't... You know, uh, UAE might have beaten us 2-0. After seeing that 90 minutes, I don't rate this UAE side very highly. I thought they lacked imagination, they lacked ideas. And we were talking about Thailand before we started recording the show. If Songkra Sith, which is the beach of Beach, is the beach of number 10, if he gave him the ball on the ball, and if he gets time and space to move the ball around, then Thailand will not be an easy team to beat for UAE. In fact, I feel then Thailand can score 
because that guy is on the ball and he makes things happen. I think he's there one of the best player. You know, like everybody knows uh, about him. He's technically gifted player. Um, uh, if you talk about India, like when we were playing against them, the best thing was what Indian players have done that day was like they didn't allow him to play. And you remember he was substituted in that match. Yeah, Seventy six so, minutes. Yeah. So, so exactly. You know, I think what you were saying about UAE not up to the mark uh, what we were expecting how they can play and all uh, but you have to give some credit to our boys they made it difficult for them you know if you see that uh, uae coach what uh, you know like off uh, post match uh, comments from him uh, what is the best thing for me like uh, indian players are able to beat these west asian defenders and with the speed which is like yeah. absolutely fantastic you know like ashik especially you know like he is showing that grit that physical presence also up front mm. and um, boy what a uh, tournament he is having i think he is one guy to definitely super you know, tournament he's definitely announced his sort of arrival on on the national stage and it looks like one who will be a part of this team uh, for the future definitely and and he has that physical presence also now mm. and we i think as a uh, nation were looking for that physical presence and plus speed and it is like uh, it works in in uh, world football now you you need to have a f physical strength and plus speed mm -hmm. earlier it was like defenders were a bit yeah. lanky to big, big they are big and not that fast yeah. but now strikers are big and fast as well and ashik is a perfect example i think uh, he is one guy especially i think uae coach was referring you know like he was one he looked very dangerous you know whenever he got the ball and he is showing that even in the match against thailand couple of times he was in very tight situation where mm. he still uh, was holding the ball and managed to pass it to the other man and which is fantastic to see yeah I, it's something that i saw in, in udanta's performance as well on on yeah. on the other flank where he's also able to take on not one but a couple of defenders if required hold on to the ball wait for support to arrive wait for the other players to arrive and then play it into space perhaps to try and create a chance so while we're on the subject of of the big guys uh, we have some issues because we don't have skype in the uae so we haven't been able to sort of get video chats going with the team but what we do have is we managed to get them on on audio so let's listen in to gurpreet and sandesh assessing for us india's performance against the uae let's also understand from them a little bit about how those goals happened or what was missing perhaps in the uae game was it more about the chances that we missed or lapses in concentration or defensive errors that led to the goals that were scored i think for the most part of the game against uh, uae you know we were we were doing really well you know the way we wanted to play the game we played that way we wanted to be high intensity we wanted to be a high pressing game so we managed to do that you know we brought them to our game you know we didn't let them play their game you know we that's one of our strengths you know so we did that well we pressed them well and i won't say lapse of concentration to be honest you know just that uh, i still had to have to when i think of that goal it still makes you you know it's like a knock on your face again when you think of that goal but i think it was more of a more of a uh miss chances as that cost us you know be it my chance when i got a header from the corner if you would have taken that lead because before when they scored we got almost three or four good chances to score but that's that's the beauty and the cruelty of football you know you don't get a second chance you don't get a retake this is just a one split second and it's gone uh but the great to the goalkeeper ilsa you know he made two very good saves and i couldn't manage to hit the target as well so we have ourselves to blame for this game uh but the good thing is that uh, i like i'm a very positive man and i always take positive from every game you know we learn from this uh, from this game that we need to take our chances because in football if we don't take our chances the others one will take there and then you end up in the losing side see the goal we conceded is something uh, which which happened due to if you can say miscommunication between the defenders or you know something like that because um it was a very very good ball and uh, i just remember um the thai players you know running into the box and i saw uh, none of our players managed uh, 
uh, to reach there in time, uh, which put me in a difficult situation where I, you know, half-heartedly uh, tried to come out, but I was, you know, I was nowhere near the ball. So it's, it's something that happened maybe because of uh, lack of organization uh, between us. So after looking back at it, it's something that uh, we need to work on and uh, and uh, we'll make sure that something like that doesn't happen again because uh, goals like that uh, can hurt us in a big tournament like this. Both Sandesh and Gurpreet are at the back. So perhaps it's natural that they'll say it was more about the missed chances and less about the defensive lapses. But in your assessment, is that is that how it is? Well, I think... Uh, uh, you know, like you play as a team, but when when you are in, you have a defensive team meeting and uh, you have a attacking team meeting usually. Mm. And when you are in defensive team meeting, you say we don't care what strikers will do, mm. we won't concede. Mm -hmm. So, so for me, it's the combination of the both. You know, like uh, as Arjun, you know, like he himself played football, so he must remember that we say that uh, always. We don't care up front what, but we are not. If I'm playing a defender and goalkeeper. I, I want a clean sheet. Mm. Yeah. So I thought like it was the combination of both uh, strikers not taking their chances, which they have done against Thailand, and we we, we saw the result yeah. also. Yeah. You no, know, had we taken that uh, um, the Sunil's uh, header or Ashik's that one on one uh, entire team match, you know the result could have been different. And by now we would have been as, uh, asking, okay, who are we gonna take on the pre quarter? Not. Not uh, oh, ex would have been, you would have been uh, finalizing our tickets right now. For Absolutely, <laughs> maybe. Yeah. So, uh, so I thought not, that not you though, <laughs> just us. <laughs> so I think it was the both. Like if you see the timing of the goals, forty second minute and eighty eight minute, which is like uh, towards yeah. the end of the first half and the second half, it can be that uh, lap of points. All legs going towards the uh, end of the game, particularly you could tell in that last little bit of chunk that the. Jitna juice tha, sab nikal diya. No, in when I came, when I uh, when you asked me to come to this show, I was prepared to. I will particularly talk about the fitness of the Indian players. So I won't be then <laughs> fair to them. I think this is one Indian team which are physically really fit. You know, like mm -hmm. uh, which I feel like is a plus point. You know, like to go the uh, backroom stuff. You will agree with me that you have been watching them closely. You know. Yeah. Like, yeah, I, I, I mean, I think the right way to sum it up is lapses of concentration only. Like when you have a shot and you're one-on-one -on, -one on goal and you're ending up hitting it straight to the goalkeeper, it's a lapse in concentration. But your concentration is wavered. Hai. At that moment, you need to be in that zen-like state where you're calm completely and around so you pick your spot, right? But you guys were talking about the two goals conceded. See, we have chances missed, agreed. But we have goals goals and what Ashwak said, the moments when we've conceded the goal, end of the first half, and end of the second half. The first half, wala, I'm not giving it that much importance. The second half, wala, na, that goal could be a killer blow if India do not make it out of the group stages. And lapses of concentration, not by the two stopper backs who haven't been able to deal with that long ball. I think the first point is, jo bande ne apne half se long ball mara hai. if you see in the second goal, Pranoy just did not go at him. And you were saying tired legs. Okay, I agree, tired legs. But it's because Pranoy did not close him down. He had all the time to pick out his player, Al Maptuk, Jotha, Uskupar, Usne Ball Dara, Usne Amna quality the Kaya. First half also, when you see the long ball that's been put in, he was not closed down in the middle. And because he had time, and then you saw a bit of a mix up between Sandesh and Anas, ki Melu, ki Tule, Tule, ki Melu, or Us Beach, Mevo, Banda, Ball Lege, or Fir, Runapna Pella Golmara. The way they played against Thailand and then. Uh, came out uh, the first half, if we talk, especially talk about UAE, I think they did pretty well, you know, like uh, uh, getting those chances, the brilliant cross by Thapa and Sunil as ever present in that, uh, you know, like fox in a box type yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. He's always there. And or any other day, he would have scored that. Any, any, you know, like uh, Sunil must be knowing it. I'm sure he must have not slept that uh, whole night uh, by thinking. Uh, uh, I, I think it was, if you give his, like, his caliber, it's one of the easiest chance for him. You know, like I have seen, oh, yeah, for sure. I remember the last year, the header he scored against us, Jamshedpur in um, Bhubaneswar. Fantastic. You know, like I have seen him scoring much tougher 
uh, play, uh, you know, headers than what uh, this one was. Mm. Maybe sometimes your eyes lit up seeing this ball so yeah. close and you yeah. just want to connect it. But, uh, you know, like... And some he did. He connected full on. Fantastic. Just, yeah. But just hit it straight at the goalkeeper. Uh, you, can't, uh, you can't blame Sunil for that. The most important uh, thing that time is get a perfect connection, which he perfectly, you know, yeah. managed to do it. Uh, but sometimes you might think that, okay, let's give credit to goalkeeper. He was at the perfect place. You know, the mm -hmm. positioning of the goalkeepers. Uh, in fact, even the... Um, the first uh, uh, chance they get, they got like uh, when Ashik was there, mm -hmm. you have to praise goalkeeper. It was a brilliant save. Mm -hmm. You know, like Ashik did pretty well and it was uh, going towards the roof of the net and uh, I think that save was brilliant. You have to give some credit to the goalkeeper also. But, uh, but uh, if you talk about uh, the performance of the UA uh, against UA in the first half was brilliant and uh, yeah, uh, to some extent, Sandesh is a little bit... Uh, Right, also that uh, they, uh, we, they don't have to blame anyone else. It's it's like they they took their chances against uh, Thailand, mm. and they didn't take their chances against UAE. Mm. And uh, and when you are playing the top level football, uh, it's yeah. uh, you know like you will small get punished. Margin. Yeah, small margins. Very very small margins, and I I suppose when you're playing against a top team, even though you guys are saying that the UAE is not at its best. But when you make a mistake against a top team, when you sort of switch off, even for a few seconds, the results are, I mean, devastating. Sort of the impact is immediate. I think on that note, we can sort of wind up the UAE part because we have another game to look forward to. And mm. we, have, uh, we also have several people who are joining us to talk about that game. Uh, among them is Anand Tyagi, who is in Sharjah right now. He's covering the Indian team practice. Anand, what I what is your take on how India are going to take on Bahrain? Uh, how 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 are we building up to that game? And uh, also, like in terms of the fans that will turn out for this game, what do you expect to see in Sharjah as different from Abu Dhabi? Hey guys, thanks for having me again. Uh, I can tell you that the mood uh, in the camp is uh, very good, very upbeat, very confident still. Yeah, maybe the smiles are not as wide as they were after the thumping win against Thailand, but nothing to suggest that there's any trouble whatsoever. I was a little troubled, however, uh, after Stephen Constantine said in his post-match press conference uh, that a couple of his players ran themselves into the ground. He was referring to Anirudhapa and he was referring to Odanta, and rightly so as well, because that's exactly uh, the kind of effort uh, they put in, apart from the rest of the team. Uh, but because uh, Danny Deegan had also said uh, that this team is 20% better aerobically going into this competition than they were, say, after before the Hero Intercontinental Cup. It also means that uh, despite playing a very hard, very physical uh, 90 minutes, this team also has the ability, the capacity to recover faster. And that was on display at the India training. They looked absolutely fine. Even Sandesh Jingan, who, was, uh, uh, who had to wear a headband uh, because of the injury that he got in the UAE game, is fine. And he also had a gym session and everything. So things are looking very good. Double thumbs up uh, for for that. Good news. Uh, and of course, Bahrain are the only side who haven't picked up a win in their group. So they'll be coming out all guns blazing. And uh, that's where India's tactics have to be maybe a little different uh, to how they have been in the first two games. Uh, in the first two games, uh, like Stephen Constantine also said, they, they came out all guns blazing and we expect them to do exactly that. The starting 11 is not really the problem. It's the fact that you know, once India went to goal down against the UAE and they had to search for a plan B, what was their plan B? And uh, that's what would probably worry uh, us Indian football fans because, uh, you know, some of the reinforcements that came off the bench uh, didn't really have the kind of impact that we were expecting them to. Need a bit more consistency in defence. You can't really complain because they held uh, their own for pretty much most of the, both the games. Uh, but... You know, one mistake here and there and it can cost you a place in the round of 16. And of course, India still have uh, fortunes very much in their hands. So that's good news. Uh, now, as far as the fans are concerned in uh, Sharjah, what I can tell you is that a lot of people live in Sharjah and uh, work in Dubai. Uh, so, you know, you expect a lot of uh, local people to be present in Sharjah. It's not a very big stadium. I think it's the smallest in terms of capacity or maybe the second if you compare it with, say, Rashid Stadium in Dubai or, uh, say, an Al Nayan Stadium where India played their first game. But because there's, uh, there's such a strong South Asian or an Indian presence in Sharjah, uh, we expect uh, large numbers to uh, turn up, provided they've bought their tickets in time. I had a chat with uh, the Kerala Blasters uh, uh, fan club in charge over here and uh, the Manjapara 
uh, they said that they've already bought 350 plus tickets and maybe another 100 or so would have bought them online as well. So that's just 450 of Kerala Blasters fans who are here. And then there are Blue Pilgrims, right? So they're, they're traveling uh, from India. Some locals have joined them as well over here. And Dubai Sharjah not very far away again. So you would expect a strong Indian presence. And because it's a, it's a very different stadium to Zayed Sports City Stadium, more compact, you can expect that that noise will be you know amplified so much more. Uh, so expect a great atmosphere. Expect... India to you know do exactly what they've done in the first two games, especially in the first half. You know, come out all guns blazing, and uh, hopefully, hopefully, I think India should be able to edge this one. From there, I want to go straight to Gurpreet, who's also given us his assessment of the Bahrain team, and perhaps this conveys what the Indian squad and the Indian camp is thinking of and how they're looking at the game that's coming up. Bahrain is a strong team, uh, man. Like you know. Uh, they have had uh, very good results uh, in the friendlies before coming in for the Asian Cup and uh, they are someone who uh, keep their shape uh, and try to play strong, uh, maybe play on the counter as well if they are facing you know, strong teams. So it will be a tight game against them uh, since they also like to you know, sometimes sit back and try to hit on the counters. Uh, so it'll be it'll be you know uh, an equal game in my opinion against them. Okay, bhai, so the main thing coming out of uh, Gurpreet's uh, chat there is that uh, they are a counter-attacking side. Now the one big problem is that here Bahare needs three points. They can't manage one point, which means they will have to shelve their counter-attacking philosophy because India to aane nahi wala unpe. India will ga piche. India will be back, that means you can't do counter-attacking. So, Bahrain will have to let go of that counter-attacking policy. In fact, after the UAE game, when I was talking to Elko, when I was talking to Renedi, that was his biggest assessment, Elko, who spent a fair bit of time in the Gulf with a lot of Gulf clubs and all. Where he's saying that Bahrain's biggest issue, and that could be India's advantage, is that they'll have to let go of their philosophy, which is counter-attacking football, and they'll have to build play, and they'll have to own possession moving forward. Because from whatever I saw of them in uh, Thailand, and this was surprising, you know, there were times when they were chasing that goal, they sent four people in front. So, remember school, we were uh, left wing, right in, uh, left in, left out. Yeah. So, there were four of them up front, three defenders, three in the middle, and four of them were bombing forward, right? As a result, they were crowding the Thai half and they were keeping the ball. But uska matlab ye tha ki when Songkrasit was on the ball, usko ek do gaps dikhe na, usne ball dal di, aur se the Thai players made a willing run. And that's how that goal happened. The left full went up to the halfway line, little ahead of the halfway line. Songkrasit ko ball dali, se kisi na outside ball dali to the right winger. Usne aake he put in a beautiful ball. Songkrasit again made made that run. And it was a classy finish. It was a world-class finish. I'm not saying we'll be able to do that or not. But that's how you can find openings against Bahrain. Because their desperation will increase. It's the last day. If Bahrain is not bigger, 2006-2010, they were one game away from qualifying from the World Cup. So if they don't qualify into the knockout rounds of the Asian Cup, then you can imagine the amount of desperation that will come into the players as the game goes on. Ishwak, you've been a player. You are a coach. Uh... You prepare teams for situations like these. How, if you go into a tournament or a match with a team that's based on a counter-attacking philosophy yourself, mm -hmm. because let's also not forget India also are playing the same style. Yeah. So what happens when two counter-attacking teams go against each other? See, I don't think they will change the, their playing style. I, and uh, I think they uh, uh, results mile, mile bhi. Or uh, Bahrain, Bahrain is one team who has the most practice matches, khele the, warm up matches, khele the, tournament on mm. And they got the result with the same style. Uh, sometimes what happened, which, uh, which you are talking about against Thailand, your positive is your weakness also. Yeah. So that's how you know Thailand took advantage. It's in football, like if you are too much of attacking team, you leave behind gaps. Mm. If you are too much defensive, like you get like too much of uh, pressure, and sooner or later you don't cope with the pressure and you concede the goal. So mistake, your yeah. your strength is your weakness also always in football. Uh, I think they will still go uh, through the wings. They will still uh, make those runs, and if India sits and are disciplined enough. They will get their chances because we were talking about the speed we have now up front. So, uh, Udanta, 
Ashik, you know, these guys, if Sunil will you remember the Thapa's goal, uh, which Udanta's, uh, essay, uh, you know, like he, he, he back pass that return pass to uh, Thapa, but uh, it was Sunil's brilliant pass, you know, like uh, through, po through mm -hmm. very uh, nicely put through in between the defenders, dissecting that defense and uh, Sunil can again do that, you know, what... Uh, uh, Thai players did again as uh, Bahrain and uh, Sunil will do the same thing because Sunil is one guy who who has the vision like one player where you can count on him in this kind of match he will do that part mm. and uh, but I don't think they will change man Mujhe nahi lagta ki itni jaldi they will they, I think they will go from the wings their wings are like they are not they won't sit down or ek jagah baith ke crosses karenge mm. they are like those uh, kind of players who love to run right. as you earlier said like they did that running all the time and they will do the same and I think we have a chance and if we manage to frustrate and then comes to the team strategy, I think when you are a coach, I think I will go for the first half first, negotiate the first half, hmm. frustrate them. Hmm. Once the first half is done, guys, this is your 45 minutes and this can give you place in history books. Yeah. And this is the one step where what Indian football needs. Mm. You know, like that up upgradation is now and that push is now. If you if you manage to qualify now to the pre quarters, you know, like you will be definitely one of the best ever team yeah. India has produced. Yeah. Yeah. Just a couple of points I wanted to make. Yeah. Just I wanted to ask one, huh? I was gonna ask you only. Yeah. Uh, do you agree with sort of Ishfaq's uh, strategy on this in terms of trying to negotiate? Because we saw in the first half against the UAE, India came out quite strong, creating the chances in the first half. It was a different scenario for sure. There was nothing to lose in the UAE game that way. I agree with that. But do you think also that waiting for it, waiting for the second half is the better plan or See? go... Go for that goal no, and put mean, the pressure. I didn't mean waiting, but I, what I mean is not conceding first. Yeah. That's what I mean. You know, keeping like the focus keeping the tight. focus, uh, like discipline. Show that discipline. What uh, you have been uh, like doing and showing in other matches, like mm -hmm. even for the UAE, like as we said, like the goals came pretty late. Mm -hmm. They were very disciplined. Even if you see the uh, commentators talking about. Immediately, the Indian players lose the ball. There are four banks, uh, two banks of four, and which is always difficult to beat. Yeah, no, I, I agree with Ishwak. I mean, why change a style that has worked for you so well in the Asian Cup? I mean, we have not been playing in the Asian Cup for so long. So, this style that has worked beautifully for us, you should stay to it. My only assessment from that game, and uh, I'll get your thoughts as well guys is that when we were defending in those banks of 8 and not 8 and we were defending in 10 practically 10 behind I felt we were going way too deep as a result of that was that when we won the ball we still had about 60-70 yards to cover here yeah. and as a result of that we were barely keeping the ball for 2-3 seconds ball was again going back to the UE then again the pressure was being applied and there again we were again setting up and doing that so I feel we shouldn't be following too deep you know, because there were many instances in the UAE game that we were all falling back, right, protecting our goal. As a result of that, there was just a mountain to climb if you had to go attack the UAE goal. Now, because why I say that is, Bahrain pe hame goal marna padega, yaar. You cannot think of going into this game of getting a nil-nil. You have to go in there to score a goal. What that game in the UAE was crying out for was a change. And the change in the sense of someone who can hold the ball for a few seconds, who can show a little bit of skill work, which is the biggest problem for this Indian team, which is I don't think there is a plan B. Generally, in the first game, we saw that JJ could be a plan B. But JJ, as soon as he came on, chest pe ball, he shot, he JJ not in the whole game. Mein. In fact, if you look at his stats, and we say he's got good telepathy with Sunil when he comes on to play in the Indian jersey. In that entire 45 minutes, JJ and Sunil only pass to each other once. Uske alawa 14 pass kare hain Jaydan ne pure game mein 45 minutes mein. So, my point is we need to have something on the ball. We can't be defending completely in numbers. If we're defending in numbers, we have to make sure that we're not defending so close to our D that jab ball mile aur kuch karna hai uske saath ki hume dekhne ki wo to ji merit mein hai ball. Goal wahan merit mein hum Dilli mein baithe hain. It's that far away. I agree with your assessment broadly speaking but I think one factor that 
he is not considering in this is that there is another team also playing. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> they, yes, but they, the UAE also ha no. brought some quality, some experience. The, I, don't, I don't think India was sitting so deep and uh, sort of just no. just by their own volition. Na? There was an amount of pressure also that they but were facing you, that you was want pushing to them back. Deep, you've got to press them right thoda aage. Point being, when they have a half or half line, ke paas ball hai, rather than letting them move on the ball, that is when we need to press on them a little bit as a unit. I'm not saying press on them when they're in their own half. Wait for them to come to your half. But those lines, that 10-15 yard ka difference, probably push that a little more. So that when you win the ball, like in Thailand, you have a chance to score a goal. Yeah, or, or I agree uh, uh, what, to some extent what Arjun is saying. Especially like we had that uh, change of plan against Thailand in second half. All of a sudden, Indian team looked completely different when we pressed them high. And Thai, uh, they didn't understand what to do because they were not expecting them to press, uh, you know, like uh, in their attacking half, mm. in their defense half, sorry. So that worked, you know, like, and you are closer to goal. I do uh, uh, understand. But now this match, the little bit scenario is a little bit different, you know, like both the teams might get nervous, uh, you know, like if it is still goalless draw, both the teams might, uh, not both, I think India might sit down, uh, park the bus at, in second half because um, they know that Bahrain wants, uh, you know, like they need a win. And that might work actually, you know, like one one throw ball, one counter attack, we need one goal and Bahrain all of a sudden have to score two goals, not one goal. But uh, it depends, as I said, as I, you know, like mentioned, the first half is the uh, crucial for me, you know, like. First, first goal. Half, yeah, first half, first goal is crucial for me. I, yeah, know you know, it's, also, I know uh, it's going back which, a bit, but because Ishfaq brought up that half-time transformation against the in, in the game against Thailand, I just want to go to Gurpreet very quickly because he's spoken about this subject, telling us a little bit about what happened in the dressing room at half-time that sort of changed or trans, transformed the Indian team's performance. I think in half-time, uh, we were, you know, happy uh, that we were making it difficult for Thailand, though Thailand had... Uh, more possession and more control of the game. Uh, I think uh, we said to each other that we need to keep the momentum because, uh, you know, we started strong and we did, uh, you know, score, which was a huge, huge uh, bonus and a relief for us. Uh, we, we knew that if, you know, we keep the intensity high uh, and uh, keep our shape and, you know, stick together, uh, the thighs won matches physically, and uh, I think that's what happened. Uh, I think we got the second goal at the perfect time, and uh, they got desperate after that, and they couldn't physically match us. Uh, you know, having speedy wingers like uh, Ashik and Udanta and Holy Charan, you know, it's it's very difficult for other teams to stop them when you know balls are played behind them. So we made sure that you know we keep our shape and uh, keep the same intensity because uh, you know that's a strong point. Okay, so there it is. Less time on the ball, something that probably applies for the Bahrain game as well. Uh, we're going to wind up this chat, guys, with final comments and predictions from from you guys for the Bahrain game. Ishfaq, starting with you. Now let's start with the origin first. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Alphabetical order. <laughs> Right, so on broadcast uh, for the last two games, that be Thailand and UAE, we were always starting the broadcast by saying this is India's biggest game in a long, long time. And in some respect, it is correct. But I feel the game versus Bahrain is their biggest till date, purely because what is lying ahead of us if this goes our way. A, a chance to do something we haven't done in over 50 years, that was to qualify for the group stages. And also, in my mind, I feel we will be doing so by going past the best team in the group. Yes, the points table is telling you something else, ki UAE upar hai, Thailand upar hai, Bahrain only has one point after two games. But if you look at their quality, if you look at their style of play, they might not be getting the goals, they might have conceded a goal, but if you see the way they attack in cohesion, bhai, us team mein bahut dam hai. Huh? They are young players, they are raring to go, and there's a lot of aggression and pace in the way they attack as a unit. Having said that, there is also inexperience to some sense, because I thought, they lacked in a plan B. Jo plan A nahi Thailand ke khilaf, then they lacked in what to do after that. So that could be something that works in India's favor if we manage to frustrate them over a 
long period of time. Now remember one more thing, what else is at stake? I asked Anant in the UAE. I said, "Bhai, are any scouts talking about Indian players? Koi koi baat kar raha hai unke baare mein ki nahi?" So he said, "Bhai, so far no one is bothered about India right now. But if we manage to make it into the knockouts, then the scout angle will come into question." because so far all the gulf scouts are only looking at gulf players and if you talk about european scouts and all who over there they only going to start taking a proper look at teams that have a chance of making it to the knockout so in that respect teams like uzbekistan teams like jordan these players are the ones who are really catching all the scouts attention because they've already made their way to the knockout so i hope i hope we do make it to the knockout because then your young boys like ashik your young boys like udanta who who i felt was the player of that game versus uae then these guys can really take their next step as per say in indian football and that would help indian football in a long way so i hope hmm ye ye draw nahi hoga yaar mere hisab se bhai it, it's all about that first goal pehla goal kha liya to bahut mushkil hai hamare liye but uh, i hope it's a 1-0 win to india 1-0 so you're saying bahrain yeah. won't get a goal ishfaq well uh, I completely agree with the origin what he was talking about Bahrain and you know like if we go past Bahrain was is actually one of the best team in this group and was uh, considered uh, one of the fast growing footballing nation in uh, um, Middle East because uh, you know if you see their around 2005 6 ranking also it's like uh, 49 FIFA ranking which is like uh, which earlier uh, origin mentioned touched about you know like uh they had two they were so close to qualify for the world, world cup, cup two times you know and uh, losing out in playoffs uh, which is sometimes heart uh, heartbreaking and uh, you know they, they they did quite well in this tournament also they looked one team you know like uh, who are playing good football but unfortunately uh, they lacked the ideas in front of the goal i think they were not uh, able to score goals in fact they got the quite uh, open chance against thailand in the first half also one or two chances they created and uh, that's why i feel if india managed to hold on on first half which uh, you know you know like origin is saying the first goal is very crucial and managed to get one goal then it it will be very interesting you know like uh, but uh, if you ask me score then i feel like uh, <laughs> बोलना पड़ेगा भाई बोलना पड़ेगा वेरी डिफिकल्ट बट आई थिंक आई गो विद वन वन ड्रॉज इंडिया गोइंग थ्रू एब्सोलूटली आई थिंक आई मीन नो बड इज आस्किंग मी बट आई एम गिविंग माई ओपिनियन एनी वे विद इशफाक ऑन दिस वन आई डोंट सी इंडिया विनिंग दिस गेम आउट राइट एंड आई रियली थिंक दैट गुरप्रीत इज गोइंग टू बी बिजी दैन ही हैज बिन द इंटायर टूर्नामेंट आई थिंक there will be more chances in this game just the nature of it the fact that it's the last group game uh uae thailand will be happening simultaneously so you you won't know really what's going on in the other game so team the both teams will have to play a little bit more open football and i think we will be under pressure more than bahrain for sure but i'm with you on on the draw angle yeah i think i think bro uh... पिछले मैच के बाद ना हम थोड़ा सीख गए हैं एंड वील डू दैट कि इफ यू नोटिस इंडिया ट्रेंड इन द फर्स्ट टू गेम्स फर्स्ट फिफ्टीन ट्वेंटी मिनट्स इज आर बेस्ट फेज ऑफ द गेम एंड इन दिस फर्स्ट फिफ्टीन टी ट्वेंटी मिनट्स हमें एक चांस मिलेगा आई थिंक वी विल बरी इट और अगर हमने पहला गोल मार दिया तो फिर आप देखना भाई ग्यारह के ग्यारह नब्बे मिनट तक अपने हाफ में डिफेंड करेंगे and i think that is the most important sometimes matches are like some matches are like that you don't care how we play you just want the result and i oh, think yeah, i think uh, this can be the biggest positive for the indian football if uh, whether it's a draw or win but we are qualifying and and i think that's the that's the uh, you know like the best prize for uh, indian team to qualify for pre quarters on that note we'll park our bus as well uh, thank you guys for tuning in you're tuning in in huge numbers Uh, it's been great for us to have this kind of support uh, for this new show that we've started thanks guys for joining in bandra boy see you can again can i give you one one feedback that came on the comment section ha huh. it went shit absolute shit <laughs> <laughs> jab tak koi gaali nahi deta hai iska matlab aap kuch theek nahi kar rahe hain to achhi baat hai bhai so jab gaali dete hain to then you should say that we have arrived all right <laughs> <laughs> 
we have arrived and we will continue to arrive or, or we will be here through through the tournament and beyond so keep tuning in guys thanks for watching